welcome to a Clown World special on the World Economic Forum. I'm here with Francis Foster. Hello, mate. And um, we're gonna we're gonna look at some videos from the World Economic Forum, which just took place in Davos. So the first one is the uh, the CEO of Palantir, which is a tech company involved in uh, you know sort of regulating what we're allowed to see on the internet. Nice talking about it. Look, well, we built PG, which single-handedly stopped uh, uh, the rise of the far right in 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 Europe. We built Foundry, which uh, was just was used to distribute the COVID vaccine and saved millions of lives globally. So he's talking about uh, he's built some sort of technology, some sort of you know algorithmic stuff that goes through and stops, uh, suppresses opinions that are deemed unpalatable, such as such as far right. Uh, I mean, I've got I've got an issue with this because uh, I mean, this week we had because you are far right. <laughs> That's your issue with it. He's only on me faking. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got I mean, me. Well, this is the thing. I mean, like, I think by '90s standards, I'm probably, you know, centre left. Yeah. But certainly by 2023 standards, oh, I'm probably, man. probably, because I'm, jo I'm in the ranks of uh, mum's net. Yeah. Uh, people who are worried about paedophilia. Yeah. You know, these, are, these, these are the things that make you far right these days. You saw, the, saw this week there was the the riots in Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, so they were sparked by there was a video of um, a schoolgirl filmed herself being propositioned by an alleged asylum seeker yeah. you know a cross-channel migrant who'd been placed in this hotel in liverpool yeah. i don't know why they stick them in these in working class areas yeah uh, it's garden readers who yeah. want them here yeah. why not stick them we've got the we've got the yeah. technology there's yeah. a thing called mosaic you can identify right down at household level uh, people's political affiliations and stuff yeah. so stick all of the cross-channel migrants right next to the people who are all like oh my god we must have them yeah. we must have them all here mm -hmm. so you can do that, then everybody's happy. Instead, yeah. they stuck them in Liverpool. This this schoolgirl uh, films herself getting getting accosted and you know offered some some schwang, and uh, and then they all they all kicked off, and that's sort of understandable. But in the media, it's all like, oh, it's far right. This yeah. far is no. People are just worried about grooming gangs. We saw what happened the last several dozen times in, in several dozen cities so people are now now want to nip it in the bud the other thing that was called far right uh, this week was uh, there's protests uh, the Tate Britain because it drag queen story hour which is you know they get these like you know I mean to be fair Leo uh, there's a, there is a far right organisation called Patriotic Alternative who did turn up at that yeah so it becomes a magnet for the yeah, far of course, right of course but it's, it's like you know you can't condemn people who want to protect kids just because some nutters came along. You know, yeah. anything like that is going to attract nutters. Well, the problem is, is that when you fail to have open, honest discussions and conversations about taboo subjects, and what happens is the subjects stay and become taboo, they get driven underground. Yeah. And then what happens is and then they actually get co-opted by genuine far-right people who yeah. say, basically, their message is, well, they're not talking about it because they don't care. Yeah. <clears throat> I do, and I will represent you. Yeah, that's what I'm with Rotherham. Yeah, and we're we're seeing that in yeah. uh, in Sweden, in Italy, yeah. where uh, you know the, the mainstream parties have sort of ignored people's wishes, uh, yeah. particularly on on immigration. I, mean, I yeah. think I've, I've said on this before. Politicians love immigration because you're basically importing workers without the cost of growing those workers of from a are. fetus. If you grow a worker from a fetus, the mother has to come out of the workforce, uh, for, you know, to to give yeah. birth. And, uh, and then you've got to pay for all the education, yeah. the, the schooling, and all that sort of stuff. And then when the, the, the child is 18, uh, they, can, they can start and join the workforce. But, um, but with immigration, you just immediately import these people. You can just chuck into your factory straight away. And if you're a politician, if you're you know one of the one of the ruling uh, part of the ruling class, yeah. uh, you're going to have uh, equity. You're going you're going to have investments in property yeah. and also in, in business. And it's great for immigration. It's great for business because uh, you, it suppresses wages. You get yeah. cheap workers, uh, so it suppresses everybody's everybody's wages. And the workers that you've got in this country don't have any bargaining power because it's like oh you you want to. You want to you want to use not working as a as a as a weapon against well guess what this this guy's going to come in and do your job for you and that's yeah. that's just the reality that's how a market works and the other thing is it pushes uh, fixed asset prices up uh, like housing because you know they're not bringing a they're not bringing a semi detached with them when they come across the channel they need a place to live did you vote Brexit Lee? <laughs> I didn't actually would you would you, here's a question would you if the 2016 referendum 
if you could do your vote again, would you have voted Brexit? I don't think I would vote for, for Brexit, except it does wind up the right people. <laughs> but my opposition to Brexit is because it, it made the news really boring for ages. <laughs> Yeah, it did. Just, and they're still going to Northern Ireland protocol. So nobody, even people in Northern Ireland don't care. I mean, that's not true. They care very deeply. <laughs> they're very people, angry about it. People in Northern Ireland care. Nobody else has got a clue what it means. Yeah. Look, so oh, the thing that I find really interesting about Brexit uh, is about Brexit and is, is the thing that you're talking about. Because of what's happened with globalisation, well, you've got Europe. And then what you've got is certain countries that essentially act like parasites for Labour. Yeah. And you've got these southern European countries who, because of the Euro and because of the EU, they're, they've been in perpetual recession since basically the moment they joined the Euro, as in the case yeah. of Greece or Italy. Because when you, when you join the Euro, it means you can't devalue your currency to make yourself your economy more competitive. Yeah, and the other problem is what you've got, and look, none of us here are economists, but you can't, it doesn't make sense to have an economy for so many different, uh, a currency, sorry, for so many different types of economy. Yeah. How can you have the same economy for, a, for a, uh, uh, sorry, the same currency for an economy like Germany and for an economy like Italy or Greece? They're completely yeah. different. So what, so what then happened, and that's why so many people love the EU, is because we just got a brain drain. There was yeah. all the brain drain from Southern Europe and they all came over to the UK, or a lot of them came over to the UK, and firstly, I don't blame them, I do yeah. exactly the same thing in, in, in their shoes, but then what happened is, those countries were withering on the vine, and then what you had was a population boom in our country, yeah. which was booming economically, but only for a small percentage of people. Yeah, yeah, and it's all the, all the sort of benefits of that mass migration. Yeah are sort of concentrated uh, in, in rich people, not, not just the fixed assets going up and cheaper uh -huh. labour. Uh, you get like cheaper nannies, you get yeah. cheaper, you know, if you're getting a conservatory done, it's cheaper to get a conservatory done. And better, let's but, just be honest. And, <laughs> it's probably, better. Yeah, a bit more diligent, they'll work a full day. Yeah. But yeah, if you're, if you're like a, a plumber or, a, you know, a guy, a builder, who's in the UK and you're, you've got a family to support, you've got three kids, you've got yeah. two cars, you've got yeah. a mortgage to pay. Man, your overheads, your price, your cost that you've got to charge is obviously going to be higher yeah. than you know some Polish guys or whatever that are coming across yeah. and working and, and living like three to a room yeah. and sending the money back home. So yeah, it's, it's not fair. Uh, we've got more from the WF, so this is uh, Tony Blair. I think there's a huge impetus now for a national digital infrastructure Digitization in, in healthcare is, I think, one of the great game changers. You know, we should be helping countries to develop a national digital infrastructure, which they will need with these new vaccines. And then, you know, finally, it, it, it's, it's also about showing people and showing the political leadership that you can make a positive difference to your healthcare system by adopting these measures because they've got, a, they've got an impact beyond any particular disease and, or, or, or pandemic. So he's talking about, uh, you know, a digital database to record everybody's healthcare, the vaccine records and stuff like that. And uh, he's, he says that adopting these measures has an impact beyond any, any one particular disease. But man, this is, this is worrying. This is um, technocrats. So he's a technocrat. He thinks yeah. government can fix things. Yeah. I, I personally, I know from having worked in government, it can't fix things. All it can do is spend your money badly mm -hmm. and waste it and become bigger and more corrupt and more profligate. Well, this is this is a problem with people like Blair, is they want more and more control, they want more and more information, they want more and more data. But this is a thing that they don't understand. We had a, a professor from Oxford University who was an expert in AI and data privacy called uh, Dr. Carissa Belis. And she was saying... Hey, excellent accent there. Thank you, mate. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and she was actually saying that when you have a society that has so much data and knows so much about its citizens, mm. what actually happens is that becomes a security threat in itself. Yeah. So for instance, China has descaled the amount of data it has on its citizens because they know that people are trying to hack their systems. Right. And the moment they hack their systems, they're going to get all the data about its, of its citizens. Yeah. And that's going to become a security risk 
to China yeah. because all of a sudden, then they know from, then the uh, people like the US or the UK know everything about China. Yeah, yeah. So it's outside uh, outside powers can also yeah. can also hack it. Of course. And, and also, you got to think about what regime can come next. So yeah. uh, the Netherlands in the in the 30s con conducted the census of all its citizens. Yeah. yeah. You know, found out all the you know religion, yeah. the gender, yeah. all the demographics of all of all its citizens. So then, when the uh, when the the Nazis yeah. uh, invaded, they had all these records, and, th and this was only supposed to, this census was only su supposed to be there so that they'd be able to provide better services. Yeah. So it was done with noble intentions, yeah, good intentions, like all evil is done. When the Nazis came in, they knew where every Jew was, yeah. where every gay was, where every uh, you know Roma, anything yeah. they 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 wanted to eliminate. Yeah. They knew exactly. It made their their whole process much. Uh, greatly expedited, and a gr far greater proportion of Jews were killed in the Netherlands than yeah. in France, for example. So there are downsides, but... Well, <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> this is not a time for jokes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can't believe I said that. Thank fuck he's gone yeah. behind you, the You can get away with it because you look like that. Yeah, you, you exactly. You look like you would have been in that census call. Let, listen, right, if the Nazis came back, I'm not getting off. Yeah, you, you know, you'd, you'd have a hard time convincing yeah, them. No, I'm just uh, some half Latino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's right, man. That, yeah. That's right. Jakob, get in the fucking van. <laughs> but um, but yeah, but that's the problem. And you know, and you, you're going to collect all this data. How many times has there been a data leak from yeah. the NHS? How yeah. many times has there been a data leak from government? Yeah. How many times have even corporations like Ashley Madison had to come out? Do you remember that? Yeah. And yeah. then because of all this data... That was like an adultery site. Yeah, that was an adultery site. All this data was on this website yeah. and it all came crashing down. Yeah, so yeah. the reality is, yeah, all right, you can collect all this data, but it's, it's going to get leaked because yeah. it always gets leaked. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how good your systems are. It doesn't matter how strong you know, the, the encryption software is. There is, all, there is some autistic nerd in a basement somewhere... Yeah. Who is going to crack it? Yeah, and technocrats like Blair, they, they see government as this benign force, just uh, just yeah. wants to do the best yeah. for the people. But man, no, the, not it can be exploited, it can be hacked by yeah. individuals or by other governments, but also the government itself can become corrupt. Elements within the government can, can exploit yeah. that data, can misuse that data. They can sell that data on. Yeah, yeah. So, so man, I don't, I don't trust the government. And I think that's a pretty fucking healthy you know, way to be. I don't trust the World Economic Forum either. You know, um, my missus uh, works, uh, she works for an American organisation. She went to a conference in, I think it was in like DC or somewhere. And they were like, and then she, she walked in and uh, into into the building. They went, uh, oh, can, can we just uh, do, just scan your, uh, your pass or whatever it is? She went, yeah, no problem. And they also scanned her face. Right. And she went, what did you do? She yeah. went, oh, well, it was just for security purposes. She went, no, you're taking that thing off. Yeah, I yeah. did not give permission for you to scan my face. Yeah, yeah. Because I, and they were like, oh, yeah, but it's just a scan. She was like, no, because she's actually au fait with this stuff. She was like, I know what you're going to do with that. Yeah. That is then going to be packaged up yeah. as data and then sold on. Yeah. And then in 30 years time, when I want health insurance, you're just going to be denied me because <laughs> it's going to be in there. Yeah, yeah. And that's what people don't realise. Yeah. Man, this stuff is insidious. So I'm with Vitality, right? And this is a fucked up thing. What's Vitality? So Vitality is like health insurance. Right. Yeah, because we have to, because we basically now live in America where we don't have any NHS. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what's going yeah, on. Yeah, or, or we live in the Soviet Union where yeah. there's, there's a thing in The Economist about it. In the Soviet Union, there's this thing called BLAT yeah. where you, uh, to get anything done, yeah. you know, yeah, to pay ostensibly, some. you know, everything's free, every, everybody's equal, but really... To get stuff done, you had to had to bribe, had to cajole, yeah. had to call in a favour to get. Yeah. Some, and it's the same now. If you want, you know, social care. If you want uh, your dad to go into a care home. If you want, yeah. uh, if you want to be treated in the NHS, yeah. any. If you want a, a good school, you got to you got to bribe. You got to cajole. You know, housing applications. The system, government, the system of government is so gummed up and yeah. so inefficient and yeah. corrupt and and useless now that you've got to bribe your way through it like we're in a Soviet dystopia. Well, this is it. And so, what has actually happened is so we're with vitality. And um, so I've got private health insurance, thankfully. And then what happens is if Vitality go, oh, you can join the gym. Yeah. And if you join the gym, you get a Vitality point. Yeah. 
And, and does that make it cheaper on your insurance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, then yeah. it makes it cheaper on the insurance. So you, you, should, go, you, should, you should screw that system by dropping a weight on your toe <laughs> and having to like cut. And it's like, wow, I joined the gym and I injured myself. But this is a good point. This is where it gets even more insidious. If you sign up to their um, their food uh, their food uh, service where you get food sent round, healthy food, that's another vitality. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it enough to pay for the food? Yeah, well, no, 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 yeah. no, it's not, but you get money off that. Right, yeah, Then yeah. you can do a mindfulness app. Oh, God. Yeah, and then if you do all of them and you hit 40 points a week, yeah. you get a free Apple Watch. <laughs> and But what does the Apple Watch do? Measures all your stuff. Yeah, so it's <laughs> tracking you. Oh, my, so you're trapped in this cage. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Jesus. And you just go like, and I, I've got friends who are like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? They gave me a free Apple Watch. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. no, you're in the fucking Matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, there's no such thing as a free lunch when it comes. It's like when, uh, you know, people are like, oh my God, my company's so good. They'll pay for me to have an abortion. They'll, yeah, they'll, yeah, take, yeah. they'll pay for me to travel to a state where it's legal and yeah. pay for, for the, the fetus to be destroyed. Yeah, it's yeah. like, that's not a kind thing. Yeah. That's to keep you at your desk yeah. plugging away and making money for them. Yeah, it's, max, it's to maximise productivity, <laughs> man. So actually, what vitality are doing but like, eh, no 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 it's just to keep yeah. you on this thing yeah yeah and then so you, you don't even get the fun of going to the gym and yeah. like you know gym used to be like there was heavy metal yeah. and you know dudes like lifting weights and stuff and yeah. now, now you go there it's people uh, doing cardio and it's, it's rubbish techno and yeah. it's, uh, it's all people trying to stay healthy and still, yeah. you're not supposed to be staying healthy you're supposed to be adding muscle bulk yeah. that is a strain on your heart exactly it's, it's and disgusting. doing roids in the, in the fucking showers talking about reducing uh, reducing world population. Mm -hmm. uh, here's this WEF guy. I think that uh, it's really a fulfillment of a dream that we had together with my leadership team when we started in 19. Uh, the first week we met in January of 19 in California and to set up the goals for the next five years. And one of them was by 2023, we will reduce the number of people in the world by 50%. I think today, this dream is becoming a reality. Why would you clap that? It's a vaccine! So it's really a purpose-driven uh, company. And I mean, their mission to reduce world population. Also, man, I don't think they're doing anything. They can't control no. who has kids. People are just having fewer kids because once, once, a, once a country becomes uh, sort of industrialized yeah. and everybody's in the workforce, Nobody can afford to have kids anymore. This is what they're, they're discovering in China. China's facing a demographic cliff. Yeah, well, China, we had, um, man, so interesting. A guy called Peter Zahan uh, who talked about demographic collapse. Yeah. And, um, and he was talking about this and on, on our show. And he was, he was saying that essentially what is happening in China, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to go off a cliff. Yeah. Because with the one-child policy, but also with the fact that society has become industrialised, which then means one of the side effects of industrialization is that people become more atomized. Yeah. So, you know, families break down. Yeah. And as a result of that, people then have less children. So things yeah. become more expensive. But people are worried about China. The reality is, like, China's fucked. It's over, yeah. It's going to be overtaken by, by India in, yeah. in terms of population. And they love shagging, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've managed to... Mate, and look, for everyone going, yeah, that's racist, yeah? What about the Kama Sutra? <laughs> yeah? It's true. They fucking love it. Have you read the Kama Sutra? <laughs> Filth. Do you, do you like, what, what is your Pornhub category, Francis? Do you, do you go in there and you're, you're like, bo Bombay... Bombay Spice. Bombay Mix. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I go on, mate. I click Bombay Mix. Cheers. That's me for six and a half minutes. Come out. Have a have 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 the have, you know you know wipe myself down on the you know pat myself down on the forehead and then yeah. can carry on with my have day. One of those little hot towels they bring round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like that, mate. And then a little uh, after eight as well. Take the taste out of the mouth. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, India, and I think I think India's done a done a better job than uh, other countries of you know keeping its uh, cultural structure and yeah. social structure yeah. while also you know developing uh, an economy and developing a middle class. But I think it's also you know this population cliff is gonna is gonna happen in India as well. I think Africa is the is the main country now yeah. that's having still having loads of kids, um, and the West. I mean, in the UK, so the the fertility rate needs to be a, a, like about two point one for yeah. a population to remain stable. Yeah. In the UK, it's 1.5. People yeah. are, uh, women are on, on average having one and a half children, which yeah. is very awkward to have half a child. But yeah. it's not enough 
to maintain a population. And, you know, and the, the um, economists and uh, politicians say, well, this is why we need mass immigration uh, to Britain. And it's like, well, wait a minute. What are, what are the reasons that people aren't having enough kids? It's because housing's too expensive yeah. and they, uh, both parents have to work so they can't afford that to have kids. Why don't we, if we bring in like more people to, to replace the, the ones that aren't being born, it's going to push the price of housing up further. Why don't we do things to encourage people to have... I mean, I'm, I'm all for uh, immigration, but not like mass immigration that's mm. sort of going to, over time, like replace too much of a chunk of a population. I think the main uh, immigration route into a country should be through a women's birth canal. <laughs> Call me old-fashioned, but, you know... Yeah, look, look I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Look, there, there's a real problem. There, there's a real problem which we're not addressing. Also, flatlining and stagnating wages. Yeah. Which has been an issue since 2008. And now, inflation is on top of that. Yeah. And you, there, there's whole generations of... You know, there's entire generations of people who have done, in inverted commas, the right thing, went to university, got a yeah. good job, have a professional career... Earning fifty grand, fifty grand, fifteen, twenty years ago would have bought you a house. Oh, it would have bought easily. you a life. Yeah. Fifty grand now. I mean, in London, what? Yeah, yeah. Once you take away the tanks, I mean, yeah. that's enough for a sandwich and a, and a, and a caramel macchiato yeah. twice a week. Yeah. Well, when I was working as a consultant, I was making about fifty grand, and at yeah. the time, I was like, "Wow, I can't believe you know I've worked my way up to yeah. like you know I used to work in a petrol station, now I'm making this as a as a consultant." I was like, "I'll try and buy a house." It's like even to buy like a a two-bedroom flat in a rubbish area I couldn't afford it or it would have been you know massive like you know and I was yeah. like man I don't this isn't the, like the worst area in life. I don't want to raise my kids here like yeah. with heroin needles in the park and stuff so I thought well I might as well quit my job so yeah. so yeah um, this is another one about uh, another thing because people people say a lot of stuff about the World Economic Forum mm. um, and other people say oh no it's a conspiracy theory but then the stuff that they actually say is pretty terrifying sometimes yeah. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens because in the coming generations we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. Now how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Now why is data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. Now, what do you need in order to hack a human being? You need two things. You need a lot of computing power, and you need a lot of data, especially biometric data. But control of data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. All of life for four billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And at the same time, science may enable life, after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. That's playing God. Using data to control evolution, because I mean, I guess DNA is just a lot mm. of a lot of data, but that's sinister. <laughs> you know, we had. I mean, it is very sinister, and I. The reason I'm not horrified by this is because we had a neuroscientist on the show called Dr. Anil Seth, who's yeah. a neuroscientist, um, who is an expert on consciousness. Um, it's a it's an incredible conversation. I, I urge people to go and check it out. It's really brilliant, and Anil was fabulous. 
Um, and one of the questions we always ask, the question we always ask at the end of every trigonometry interview is, what's the one thing we're not talking about as a society that, really, that we really should be? And Anil said um, this kind of stuff. And he actually said, because the technology in 20, 30 years is going to be there. Yeah. And he said, but the reality is, it's only the very, very wealthy are going to be able to afford it. Right. So what that and is going to when be... When you say the wealthy be able to afford it, and this is to, to do their own sort of gene yeah. editing to remove any sort of um, any sort of inherited uh, defects. defects everything so and also I guess remove the sort of senescence remove the um, degradation of cells you can yeah. tweak cells so they, they live longer and you become like immortal to an yeah extent. yeah and you can rejuvenate and all of this and he goes so what is going to happen and he goes you know and people go well what's wrong with that and he goes but think about society where mm. you have these elites who are literally going to live for hundreds and hundreds of years yeah and then you're going to have, you know, the proletariat who yeah. are going to spawn and die and whatever else. Yeah. And the elites are always going to be in control. Yeah. Now, wealthy people already live longer yeah. than you know, poor people. We, that's just a statistical fact. It's one of the best things about them. Yeah, one, exactly. One of the reasons you should get rich. Yeah, but just imagine Rupert Murdoch living forever. <laughs> I thought he was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but he, he's, <laughs> he's not, not in a good way, man. <laughs> Mate, he's not in a good way. Like, he looks like he's trapped inside a curse. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a driving glove. Yeah. Like that <laughs> folded up face. Yeah. Like a marigold yeah. being stuck down the back of the fridge. <laughs> exactly. But just imagine a healthy, young, vibrant Rupert Murdoch. Like me. Yeah, exactly. But 200 years old. And he's always <laughs> been in charge of the media. Yeah, yeah. You'd literally need to kill the cunt. <laughs> you'd, need to, you'd need to kill him. That's the only thing you'd be able to do. Yeah. So, I, I, to me, the, the, I think this is why. Like, I started trigonometry and I was happy. And I, I'm, I'm just really fucking depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just depressed. <laughs> Yeah, and also I don't trust the, I don't trust the people who are going to be in charge of the data. You yeah. know, they, they come on. You know, this guy talks about it, and you know, Tony Blair talks about you yeah. know having this data, the government having this data. Man, I know the government doesn't have my best uh, best no. interests at heart. Like the only people that have my best interests at heart are me and occasionally my wife. Yeah, occasionally. Every, everyone else, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I definitely don't trust, don't trust some disinterested. Uh, apparatchik yeah. in in the government to to look after look after me, and we're seeing uh, the creep of uh, legislation that makes uh, people the sort of the, the war that makes makes the government in charge of people. We saw the the, the name persons bill in Scotland that made children instead of you know parents being responsible for children, yeah. the state was responsible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Name person, the state was yeah. responsible for the child. See it in Canada with the medically assisted dying. Yeah. It's uh, this this creep of, of government into it. All the government should really do is like fix the roads, pick up the rubbish, that's it, run the schools, whatever mm. you need to do. Uh, and and that's that's it. We don't need to be uh, micromanaged in this way that is so open to to, to bad actors. I, I think the problem is, man. Like to me, a lot of this is like the death of religion because yeah. we we no longer have faith. We we no longer have faith that something is going to happen when we die. We no longer believe that there's this benevolent being who's looking after us. Yeah. So we need that. Yeah. And we also we don't want discomfort because if this is all there is in life then why shouldn't life just be one long stretch of hedonistic joy? Yeah. And as a result of that, we don't want discomfort, we don't want pain, we don't want to, we don't want to be challenged, we want to be kept safe. Now, yeah. we, we both know that safety is an illusion. There's no such thing as safety. Yeah. Reality yeah. is. There, there isn't. You can, you can make things more safe, yeah. but there is no such thing as safety. Yeah, and right. if, if somebody, if you're given somebody, uh, if somebody promises to keep you safe, like the government brings said, oh, this legislation will keep you, will keep trans people safe or whatever. No, what it's, what it's going to do is it's going to give them control over people uh, so they can they can they can use that to their own end. So, yeah. for example, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, yeah. uh, she said, oh, trans people are, are un, uh, aren't safe. Uh, so we're bringing through this legislation, and she used, uh, you know, the ac accusations of transphobia to, yeah. to get rid of um, to get rid of Joanna Cherry from the front yeah. bench, you know, yeah. a political rival. Yeah. Uh, used the um, accusations of hate crime, hate speech, and all yeah. the rest of it to uh, harass and intimidate Marion Miller, yeah. uh, you know, a gender critical feminist yeah. who spoke out against the SNP. So yeah, and th and this is it, and you people always forget this that whatever you do in life there's going to be trade-offs. Yeah. And some of these trade-offs, you can't possibly predict what the effect of these trade-offs are. 
And as a result of that, okay, so you're going to be kept safe. We're going to have a lockdown. We're going to be kept safe. Yeah, but what about inflation? Yeah. What about the fact that the economy is trash? What about the fact that now, because of the fact, because of the NHS, we have got a skyrocketing excess mortality rate? Yeah. No one's talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't want to talk about it. Yeah. The, I, I read this stat, and I, I think I mentioned it to you before. There, there was an ex, the one uh, a day last month in January was the highest rate of excess deaths in Scotland since 1952. Right. Yeah. Good batch of smack came through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah! <laughs> so what you... I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know what, what people want. Yeah. Because what you want isn't what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... You're going to be sold a lie. And then yeah. people are going to do what they, what they want to do. Um, yeah. that's what that's what government does and you know this encroaching of government into every area of our life and just the, the sort of steady creep the, the, it's not the just shit, government man it's corporations as well which are really well, now you know a, a sort of branch of the government yeah, in, of in course. a lot of cases we see in, in America with uh, you know big tech firms Twitter yeah. Yeah. Uh, before it was before it was taken over by Elon Musk yeah. and, and you know other social media firms yeah and um, Working hand in hand with uh, with government agencies such as the FBI, and working hand in hand with a political party yeah. to silence any criticism yeah. of that political party, even if it was completely just and and you know there's evidence like the Hunter Biden laptop story. Yeah. Uh, so I mean that's that's terrifying. That's that's essentially a sort of soft fascism where the the government co-opts uh, all corporations into its into its thing. But this is the thing we interviewed Michael Schellenberger about this, yeah. and he so he was one of the journalists in charge of the Twitter files, and so that just went up on on YouTube uh, on Sunday. I mean, people were like going mad about it and sharing it because it's it's just so heinous. Yeah. But the, the, they they did this in this country. We interviewed Silky Carlo from Big Brother Watch, mm. and she was talking about how they were doing the exact same thing during the pandemic, yeah. silencing. Virologists, epidemiologists, doctors who strayed from the COVID narrative. Yeah, yeah. And people who also platformed and spoke to these people. So basically, people like me were being spied on by the government. Jeez. So this Man, is that what must have been a, that must have been a depressing job for that that government. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, what am I going to be working? Is it going to be Russia? Yeah. Is it going to be Islamic terrorists? It's like no, I'm watching uh, I'm watching Francis having a having a wine. Yeah. Himself. Oh, he's fucking doing it again. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Fuck's sake! I went to Cambridge. I got a double first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when it did my time, I thought it was going to be James Bond. Bond? No, instead I'm just watching a glorified chimp chimp it out again for the third successive time in the day. Obviously, that's a joke. I'm 40. There's no way I can do that. (laughs) Those days are gone. Uh, But yeah, yeah. So, so you, you. and and that's the thing that I, I found really disheartening with the pandemic is yeah. just, you know, the desire for people to be kept safe. And yeah. you just go, this doesn't exist. Well, yeah, this is this is the thing that say like, you know, oh, it's, it's for everything's done with noble intentions. It's like we're, yeah. we've got to stop these these narratives. We've got to stop any question of yeah. the vaccine because you know that could cause vaccine uptake to to drop, and yeah. that's you know then people are going to die. And it's like. Well, maybe, like, the reason I didn't get the vaccine is not because I'm anti-vax or anything. Like, you know, I, I would have got the vaccine, but they were being so insistent yeah. that you have it and nobody was allowed to question it. It was like, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer offering you a drink. Yeah. Like Bill Cosby offering mm-hmm. you that gin and tonic. It's like, nah, like, what, what's the what's the white granules at the bottom of it? Oh, no, that, that's, that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. It's like, no, like, I just, you know, maybe I'll just take my chances with nature yeah and I did and I got COVID and I deeply regretted not getting the vaccine <laughs> well and let's be fair the COVID uh, virus wasn't strictly natural was it <laughs> you what? took your chances <laughs> with nature well this is the thing I've been having uh, there's a guy Matthew Sweet who's a journalist yeah. um, and he's been uh, he's been really kicking off against uh, about about GB News and he's been yeah. saying you know oh you've, you've platformed these, these things you've know, platformed criticism of the World Economic Forum and it's like man there should be some questioning. Yeah, of course. Of the world economic, you get all these like leaders here. I mean, he's saying the, the World Economic Forum has no influence over uh, world leaders. It's like, are you, are you nuts? Then, then why like, are they fucking meeting? Why are they going there? And like, yeah. If they were going to a Nazi rally, would yeah. you be just as blasé yeah. about it? Oh, no, they're not picking up any ideas from this Nazi yeah. rally. It's like, no, nah, there's something going on there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and also, what, what was the thing where just... Uh, vaccine. The vaccine, yeah, yeah. he says, you know, uh, GB News or whatever is platformed 
um, uh, narratives about the vaccine that are, that are incorrect or whatever. But man, it's there, there's enough. Uh, there's enough information there. There's enough doubt there for for stuff to be to be dis- uh, at the very least debated and discussed. He's saying there's you know the COVID COVID itself wasn't it's not a Chinese it wasn't made in a Chinese lab. How does he know? It wasn't man made. It's not a bioweapon. And yeah, how does he know? I mean, how these are, these are uh, it's hypotheses. not like the Chinese have been particularly you know <laughs> welcoming to people investigating. Yeah, you're never going to know either way because yeah. China has done such a such an amazing job of being completely opaque about yeah. it and completely obfuscating any any uh, mm-hmm. question yeah. and also paying scientists yeah. to, to spread. Uh, the narrative that it, it wasn't it wasn't man made and it wasn't made in a lab yeah. and all the rest of it. So we're never we're never going to know. There's evidence that suggests it could have been it yeah. could be man made. There's there's like the, there's patterns in the sort of yeah. in the the genome or whatever it is that you know that they say mm. you know this this suggests that it's it's man you know you wouldn't get these patterns yeah. naturally occurring. Uh, but we're never we're never going to know. And it you know given the the scientific research that China yeah. does uh, you know they. They don't. They don't follow sort of world guidance yeah. and, and rules on on uh, on medical research. Yeah. So it's certainly a plausible hypothesis, and I don't think you can discount it. You can't condemn people who bring it up as, no. as conspiracy theorists. Well, no, because the thing is, all you're doing is you're shutting down debate and discussion. Yeah. Because there are a lot of scientists who believe that the that it was leaked accidentally from a lab. Yeah. Which is you know it's it's that is not within the realms of Conspiracy theory. Well, the New York Post uh, ran a thing about how um, so the the labs because they they go through so many animals because yeah. they're testing testing yeah. all these drugs, testing all these these viruses, whatever yeah. on these animals. Uh, the lab technicians who aren't particularly well paid were taking the cadavers of these yeah. animals and selling them to the wet market, and they were making huge amounts of money yeah. doing this. And I can totally imagine that happening because man, oh. they sell. They, I mean, they're, they're literally eating bats. People aren't that worried about yeah. you know. It's not like you've got your EU. Uh, food standards over there. Yeah. Even I saw I saw a thing about uh, they've got a thing called gutter oil yeah. in China, which is people go round um, the gutters, the sewers, yeah. and uh, get all the sort of the ullage, all the just yeah. lumpy, fatty, yeah. turdy stuff out yeah. of the out of the sewage, and like render it down and get fat from it. And all this is you know it's toxic, it's things, yeah. it's carcinogenic. But you know they sell it on to, to street vendors and stuff, and people are making the the person who's doing it made enough money to buy like two houses. So stuff happens in China that you know maybe we, we we tend not to eat like you know shit oil from the sewers uh, in the West, but that that doesn't mean they don't do it there. And so the you know these technicians, this hypothesis that the lab technicians were selling the cadavers at the market, that would obviously you know if you're selling, that's an obvious pathway into of into course. the human body for for the for viruses. Um, so yeah, man, I don't know I don't know why we're not allowed to. At least discuss these yeah. things. Yeah, you should be allowed to discuss it. Yeah. We should be allowed to talk about the vaccine and about the side effects of the vaccine. Yeah. Every medical intervention has side effects. Yeah. It just does. Yeah. I don't care. You know. I mean, my friend. I was saying to my friend, look, I'm not comfortable with taking the vaccine. The reality is, I've already had COVID. I got it a second time, and it fucked me hard. Yeah. Um, and he was going, well, why wouldn't you? You know, because he's perfectly safe. I'm like, you don't know that. Yeah, yeah. He was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, well, what are the long-term studies on this? Yeah, yeah. He was like, well, I don't know. Yeah, and I sort of wish, you know, if I could go back in time, I probably would have had the vaccine. Mm. And, uh, you know, now that I know that, you know, your head doesn't fall off after yeah. after eight weeks or whatever. But, you know, at the time, I didn't. And like you say, now I've been exposed to COVID. I've had it, you know, at least twice. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, sure that that's some sort of, some sort of immunity. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, on the other hand, I do recognise that COVID itself causes long-term of uh, health problems yeah. and, you know, uh, uh, all these COVID cranks, all these anti-vax cranks who seem to have replaced some, you know, they, they need some sort of battle to yeah. fight. Now that the tide's gone out and, like, you know, uh, it's just left the people who are yeah. really, like, embittered uh, and still yeah. fighting this COVID vaccine thing. It's, man, who cares? Yeah. That went all, all the lockdown, two years of lockdown, uh, people were like, oh, we were locked in our homes. We, we couldn't travel. Man, I wasn't locked in my home. I was going everywhere. I was going, it was brilliant. There was so much space on the train. Yeah. I was like going to see my mates. We're having parties. 
and just carrying on like normal. What do you think's going to happen? The police are going to come around? What, are you, are you a pussy? Like, Jesus Christ, grow up here. Have, <laughs> a, have a party during lockdown. I was on three continents during lockdown. All <laughs> you need to do is falsify medical records <laughs> and get fake QR codes and fake apps. And it's, it's so simple. I could do it. I'm not a hacker or anything. I could fool the system. You know what I mean? The, the first first time I did it, you didn't even need, like, you just needed a, a letter. Yeah. Just a letter with it and it looked like, you know, but man, pe- people are nuts. People just want, people want something to be upset about. Yeah. I certainly do. I'll just finish this uh, this WEF thing with, um, so this was the entertainment at the World Economic yeah. Forum this year. <laughs> Do you know what? That reminded me of music I had to pretend to like at university to get girls to sleep with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, right. you, you like Ochiloa as well? Me too! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love Woman. <laughs> I like Woman as well! Let's do that! Yeah, yeah, who doesn't like hemp? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, for me, that was the. But that, that, that shows, that's, that's a glimpse in, inside the souls yeah. of the people. Who attend? Uh, and if they if they had uh, Motley Crue or yeah. something, I'd be like, hey, maybe maybe there's maybe yeah. there's some justification to these people. Maybe they're not all bad. But no, this is the final nail in, in the, the coffin, coffin for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for watching the World Economic Forum special from Clown World. We've got uh, we've got exclusive content on the Patreon. So sign up to my Patreon for that. It means I get money, mm-hmm. and I, I love money. So there's a link below and sign up and also francis yeah just check out trigonometry he's not going to give me any fucking money i'm not getting he doesn't need money he What's runs fuck? trigonometry he's the he's the main man at trigonometry made of money May, yeah yeah because you've running a business in this country Can you anyway me moaning about corporation tax yeah like i am fucking money about corporation tax fucking elon musk sitting here Jesus. Yeah, God. Oh, yeah. My, my corporation tax. Oh my yeah. God. The, the yeah. rent, the rental on my yacht has gone up. Oh yeah, my, yeah, yeah, my yeah, Cayman yeah. Islands penthouse. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Well, I was living in a fucking bed sit in Croydon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. He's showing off. He's got a bed sit. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 Bye.